Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. So today I'll be talking about uh, a company-wide org setting as a part of your PD2 uh, certification. You must be thinking, right? I know this information, right? Why I'm talking about it. Well, it's a part of the certification, right? You should know about it. And I do understand that, you know, it's a, it's a very simple topic, but just for the sake of completeness, I wanted to make sure that I cover pretty much everything. Okay, now company settings, right? Now, Company settings are important. So, so what is a company setting, right? Company settings, it's pretty much in simple terms, collection of information about your organization, right? Uh, so, so when you normally what happens, right? So when you sign up for a Salesforce, right? So you enter the company information and that gets uh, created behind the scene. Uh, that being said, you can update your company settings, um, right? So that's pretty straightforward. I'll show you how to do that. You know, so I've logged into my org, right? So you just go to this uh, Gecko icon, which will take you to the setup. So, you know, as you can see, I already started typing company, right? So you go to company here and you just go to company information and this other information you have. And so, you know, you can change the stuff here. So, you know, so if you wanted to edit it, you can change the organization name, primary contact. You can put the address if you wanted to, right? You can put the city, uh, the default look, uh, the local, the language, uh, you know, English and the time zone. So this is the uh, the time zone which the company operates on. And then the, the currency local, right? Uh, which since we are not dealing with multi-currency, right? So it will, you know, pick and choose the currency you select, right? In this case, it's USD. That's fine. Okay, now let's say your company operates in a different region, right? Let's say your company operates in New Zealand, uh, Australia, say it operates in Bosnia, uh, say India, you know, or say uh, Monaco, wherever, right? So uh, so in that case, you might need to have a multi-currency, right? And so if you are a user, say, for instance, if you are a user from India or if you're a user from, say, um, from New Zealand, right? So you might want to be interested to see the details in New Zealand currency rather than US currency, right? So that's one of the thing. And so, and also one of the thing I just wanted to uh, show you the stuff around. Um, I'm just gonna go back. Uh, so you can also see um, information about the use data space, use file space, API request. You can see all kind of stuff here, which is pretty handy, right? And streaming API events, so you can see the the limit and, and, and the max limit and and the number of uh, the queries happens. And you can also look at the user licenses, what you got, and permission set licenses and feature licenses, right? It's pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so that's that's pretty much. Uh, basic about the company uh, company information and you have other information like fiscal year information which is mostly used for reporting and forecasting right that's one of the thing uh, you do first see so this is what the fiscal year here so if we go here so you know usually you know it says the fiscal year starts uh, month is January I mean you can change it the way you want it so that's you know according to your country and your business requirement um, so and then we have business hours. So business hours are usually used, you know, when you wanted to escalate something, right? So that's where, uh, so when you uh, wanted to escalate a case, uh, you know, so urgent case, you know, semi-urgent case. So that's where the business hours comes in the picture. Then you have a holidays. Uh, so holidays, you know, where you have, say, for instance, you have, uh, say, uh, Yom Kippur, you know, say, for instance, you have, you know, Hanukkah or, you know, Christmas or, you know, whatever, right? So you can, you know, you can put that as a part of the holiday to skip the, you know, the escalations, right? That's, but that's pretty straightforward, right? I just uh, um, don't want to, you know, go much into detail. This, it's pretty, it's pretty admin stuff, right? But that being said, you should know it, right? I mean, because, you know, people do uh, get confused at times. They think, oh, yeah, these are the admin stuff. Why should I, as a Salesforce developer, should know. The first thing I just wanted to mention to you guys, to become a Salesforce developer, you have to be an admin first, right? You can't be a developer without being an admin because then it's a disaster. Then you might start writing code for things which is unnecessary, right? So that's this is a company-wide setting. Now let's go to the personal settings, right? So you go to this um, uh, view profile here 
and you got a setting you got a setting here so it will take you to the settings so if you've got a personal information you can change here you can go to the um uh, hang on a second you can go to the language and time zone you know this is very important settings if you if you say you know if i wanted to change the setting to uh say new zealand time i can change it or chile um or venezuela or whatever east uh, sorry not eastern europe uh i mean the latin america uh, so you can change it to Latin America as well, right? Latin American time zone. Um, and then the language you want, whatever you want. If you speak Italian, you can change Italian, right? And if, uh, so, yeah. Okay. Now, this is all cool, right? Now, let's say you're, like I said, your business wants to operate in um, in a different regions. So you might want to have, um, you know, multi-currency stuff, right? And so, which is important, to enable the multi-currency, okay? So I'm gonna go to edit the company information. You can scroll down. Uh, there's one thing I just wanted to mention that you have something called improved date value accurate for daylight saving, right? So it will consider the daylight saving. So like for instance, New Zealand, right? Today, the daylight saving happened because we are, um, we are in the spring, right? So the time changes. So the way I remember, right? In spring, you lose an hour of your sleep. In winter, you gain an hour of sleep because I always have trouble remembering the time. So, so what I meant by that is, right? So, for instance, uh, if you think, you know, if, if yesterday, if it's a nine o'clock, right? Uh, so today, the nine o'clock will become ten o'clock, right? So you lose an hour of sleep. That's what happens in spring. That's just, a, you know, that's the way I remember it. Um, and winter, if it's a ten o'clock, it will become nine. So you get oh. Okay, so I got an, an hour of sleep more. So, yeah, I'm a winter person, though, so. Okay, sorry, I digress. Um, so, you have something called active multiple currency. So, I click here. And I'm going to save. Okay, so we activated the multi-currency. Okay, that's fantastic. So, hopefully, I will find. Okay, so let me... Uh, see the multi currency stuff here. Um, just a second. See, now once you activate it, right, you can't uh, deactivate. The, the multi-currency setting. So that's that's one of the things you have to consider. Uh, let's see if I can... Right, so now you go to manage currency. So if you, so since we enabled uh, multi-currencies, right? So you just search for currencies, you go to manage currency, say, uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, initially when the company was dealing with one currency, so you will mark that one as a copper currency, so this is a US dollar. So, so what that means is that you have a head office in the United States, uh, so you deal with the United States currency, that's a USD. Uh, but that, So if you have a head office say, in New Zealand, so you change the copper currency to New Zealand one, and rest of the currencies you can add whatever the way you wanted to add. Okay, so I'm gonna add new currency here. Say I wanted to add New Zealand currency, uh, must be here, NZD, okay, New Zealand dollar, uh, conversion rate, um, so, uh, so that means it will be 1 point, um, say 1.4, right, so I'll just keep it here, and so I'm just going to say edit rate, so 1 US dollar equal to 1.4 New Zealand rate, so, um, yeah, something roughly around that, right? I can, you can. It's, it's normally better to look at, uh, you know, the current market rate, uh, or you can import it. You know, you, you can interface with the exchange server to get the, uh, the latest rate, right? So, that being said, you have a back data currencies and uh, other stuff, right? So I don't want to get into that for now. So, just remember this, right? If you wanted to enable multiple currency, right? So you can do that by going here. <clears throat> so in this case of enable New Zealand dollars. Okay, now let's say I don't want it to see, um, say for instance, I have opportunities here, right? And uh, so, um, over, and let's say if I, have, I have different opportunities here, right? So, and, 
more opportunities, right? And I don't want to see the amount in US dollars. I wanted to see in New Zealand dollars, right? So because obviously it doesn't make sense to me just to see, because I, I live in New Zealand, right? Well, so it will be difficult for me to imagine, oh, except for instance, a software cost 50 USD, right? And I think, oh, how much the heck it costs in New Zealand dollars, right? And, and plus, if I'm dealing with a customer from New Zealand, right? If I have an if I have an opportunity, say for instance, if I'm selling a, a beer to a local brewery in New Zealand, right? So I can't charge them in US dollar because we don't do American currency here, right? I mean, you have to go to exchange center to do that. But so this is information is not going to be helpful for me. So what I'm going to do, I will change my personal currency to New Zealand dollar. That's exactly what I'm going to do show you how to do that so that's pretty straightforward so you go to this you know view profile here and settings and so you go to language and times all right so you remember one thing right if you paid attention before we didn't have this currency option here because the reason why there's no point of changing uh, giving an option here when you are only dealing with a single currency okay so i'll change it to new zealand dollar all right and i'll save it here Hmm. I don't know what the heck is I'm saying. Okay, it's saved, right? Uh, at times, it acts strange, but it's all right. It's all good. Um, so I changed to the New Zealand dollar, and I'm going to refresh the page. And when I refresh the page, you can go to opportunity, um, and I'll go to the new, uh, sorry, all opportunities. Now you see, I can see the New Zealand dollar, right? Because I'm more interested to see how it looks like. This is what I'm interested into. So this is where the multi-currency plays an important role. If you're dealing with, you know, offices located in different parts of the world, right? Um, so, and also, if you wanted to change your corporate currency, you can also do that. So you go to set up again, um, and you go to currencies. Uh, look for currencies, manage currencies, and so you can change the corporate here, right? It's pretty straightforward. And if you want to change it back to, to something else, you can do that from here. I don't want to fiddle with it, but just to give you a, a context, if you wanted to do that, you can do it from here. All right, so this is uh, pretty much I wanted to talk about a pretty simple topic, right? You must be thinking, yeah, this is pretty, pretty, pretty easy topic. Yeah, I do understand it's pretty easy, but, you know, it's still important to know people do make mistakes. You know, I remember I interviewed a guy um, uh, probably last year, and I asked him the question about multi-currency. The guy had 10 certification, right, 10 certification. So I, I asked him about multi-currencies, right, and give him a scenario. Couldn't answer it. You know, the, the, the one of the biggest challenges I find in the interview, people come to me with, you know, in New Zealand, Salesforce is exploding, right? We got a lot of requirement. But the biggest problem is that people are getting certification over certification. And then I ask them a scenario. Can you explain me the difference between a role and profile in a real life scenario? They couldn't answer it. I, what the heck? What? So, you know, so the certification seems it was, it was pointless at this stage, right? I mean, I will hire someone with no certification, as long as that person understand the platform, right? So that's important for me. But that being said, though, certification is a great way to learn new stuff. If you're a very active learner and if you wanted to try out things, you know, constant learning, certifications is, is amazing in that case, right? But, you know, I've seen people use a lot of dumps and, and get certified, and when they go for an interview, they barely could answer a simple question, right? So which is disgusting in my opinion. Right, and I strongly believe New Zealand market should be more strict when it comes to hiring people because we can't. I've seen a lot of people working on, you know, Salesforce platform creating a junk, garbage code, and it's really frustrated me to the core when I have to go and, you know, troubleshoot the, you know, the, you know, dump creator by someone else. So, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why when it comes to hiring, I'm pretty strict about it. I, I just straight away, person can't answer the simple question. Sorry, Paul, it's no point wasting each other time. You can buy something else to do. Yeah, that's my opinion. So, yeah. So, uh, sorry for the rant, but I just thought it's important to mention that. Okay. And so another thing I just wanted to say, I'll try to make calls every single day. I mean, uh, you know, I do understand that, you know, you guys might want to prepare PD2. So I will make sure that I'll do it every day, except Friday, because Friday is a, is a Shabbat for me. 
Um, I normally don't talk about my faith because I'm a very private person. So, uh, you know, I'm, because, you know, most of you don't know, I'm a person of a Jewish faith. Uh, so I do keep Shabbat. I mean, I've been an atheist most of my life because I, I, I didn't follow my religion much. You know, when you're young, you don't give a rat ass about it, to be honest. But that being said, right, I thought, you know, one day in a week, it's, it's just good to keep Shabbat. So I, I, I do it. So I don't want it to do anything to do with technology on Friday to, um, from Friday evening to Saturday evening. So, you know, so on that day, you won't hear any kind of sales for stuff from me. So rest of the days in the week, I will make the videos for you. I promise you guys. All right, guys, that being said, you guys have an amazing Sunday. Take care wherever you are.